Good afternoon, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Fawzan Rafiq. Uh, today, uh, this is our uh, CPD on behalf of Middle Contract Saving uh, Association. Uh, this will be the last CPD, uh, which uh, our organization doing on the topic of the uh, RICS competencies. Uh, this is our 18th CPD on the topic of conflict avoidance and management and dispute resolution procedures. Um, I believe uh, we'll be continuing the other CPDs in some different topics and uh, as per the uh, requirement of RICS candidates. So please uh, keep uh, be with us. And uh, I'll be starting my CPD in a minute. Uh, still the people are joining. Um, Okay, uh, again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the conflict avoidance and management and dispute resolution procedures. I'm Fauzan Rafiq. Uh, we'll be spending another two hours uh, regarding all the uh, all the people. Uh, can everyone can hear, right? Somebody can you answer please? Excellent. So we'll spend another two hours uh, to understand what are the conflict avoidance method, especially in construction industry and uh, dispute resolution procedures and how it's managed. So first of all, uh, I'll start with an agenda, how uh, things will be going on. So today now we are going to first of all have a look on the what RIC is looking for in terms of our subject matter. Simply we say a dispute resolution procedures. 
Uh, so how, what are the things RICS is looking on? And uh, RICS have a study list. And what are the things included in that study list? Each of uh, them will have a look and we'll uh, go little detail on the each uh, particular activities. Then finally, I'll give you a chance to ask any question. Most of your question will be answered in the, my session itself. We are touching the, the maximum area what we can today within this two hour session. Uh, but if uh, something is missing, you can raise your question in the end of the session. Uh, I'm pleased to answer your questions. Okay, the RICS is looking for some knowledge and understanding about the dispute resolution and the conflict avoidance uh, and it's how it's managed. So the RICS simply asking the technique of conflict avoidance, the management and the dispute resolution in the particular, uh, in particular by approach, appropriate selection of procurement route and the use of uh, progress such as uh, process such as partnering. We'll have a look what is partnering. And uh, <clears throat> furthermore, RSC is looking for how various form of contract deal with dispute avoidance and their provisions for resolving the dispute. In this, uh, I believe in contract administration, you have plenty of uh, knowledge, you have gained the plenty of knowledge related, related to subject matter, but even though we'll have a look uh, in an very general manner, how to avoid the uh, dispute and the uh, conflict avoidance. Uh, then the legal and statutory requirements for the resolution of dispute in construction contract. We'll have a look what are the principles available and what are the mitigation plans available. We'll have a look on that as well. Then conflict management and dispute resolution procedures within the construction industry. We'll uh, generally will have a look on this as well. Then again, the RICS list. Uh, these are the uh, major areas we will have a look: conflict avoidance and the spectrum of the dispute resolution technique. Then hierarchy, and then conflict avoidance and dispute resolution in the standard form in various summary based partnering, negotiation, and uh, dispute board, mediation and conciliation, mini trial, adjudication, arbitration, mid export internal, independent export uh, determination, litigation, then Okay, arbitration or litigation, kind of a comparison. Finally, which uh, dispute resolution method is suitable to your project? How uh, you will decide that? End of the day, will uh, end of the session, we'll look at that as well. So I'm moving to the next slide. Okay, what is contractual dispute? Why the contractual disputes are uh, incurred? The contractual dispute in construction raised from the argument, disagreement, and finally end up within dispute. Finally end up disturbing your project or costing more, or costing more time, or uh, it will affect you, uh, the, the quality of your project or the final outcome of your project. So this dispute is so expensive. If you can avoid those disputes, uh, it is good for the project and on behalf of project, uh, it is required. These, dispute, these di disputes are like all other disputes between human. But, however, several, there are several factors make them different from the nature of dis other dispute. These are the factors of the condition of contract, First, then technological complexity. Because our, our projects are so complicated. In mechanical works are there, electrical works are there, for example, uh, building project. And uh, civil engineering is there. In, in internal, uh, within the civil engineering, there are structural engineering, 
and uh, the finishers. So our projects are so complicated. Then uh, the amount of time and money available that also there are limitation and budget. Uh, limitation in terms of time and the uh, cost as well. Uh, then client's expectation. It's changed every day. Client coming, coming with and variations. So it should be managed in a normal uh, contracts, normal uh, way of uh, agreements. Such a things are very less than environmental factors in terms of protection of environmental factors and the weather conditions. Those are affecting our projects. And uh, legal on the, the, those basis, the legal basis, arguments and meeting. In principle, there are some uncertainty within our contract. So this, this is the major issue or major concern. Uh, our contract, the construction contracts are not similar to, or dispute related to the construction contracts are not similar to the other normal contracts. So uh, there is a small definition from a very famous construction law book. The disputes are different than the conflicts. The dispute, dis, disputes arise when a conflict become a, a confrontation due to a pride or ignorance. The disputes more mainly comes due to the ignorance or you are not taking as a serious matter serious business. And that's why the most of the disputes come. So conflict avoidance or dispute avoidance, how we can avoid this? So main cause of uh, the conflict or dispute in construction industry, the era in management of contract. So there are main contract, subcontract, consultancy contract within parties. Minimum three to four parties are involved in these contracts. So those contract, the, if there is an error or mistake within the contract, definitely this will be end up with as a dispute. So the, all the error to be, we should minimize the error within the contracts. The failure by an employer or contractor to comply with the detailed contractual obligations. Pay late payment to a standard of work. So if the parties fail to complete his obligation, then uh, again, the disputes comes, disputes arise. Then the, okay, again, the arguments between the parties. If, the, if you don't have a proper relationship between the party or proper understanding with the party, within the parties. So again, the dispute will come and poor communication, of course. This is also a part of an understanding between the party. Finally, what it will end up if you have a dispute? Damage business relationship. Of course, it will damage your business relationship. Then loss of money. Uh, definitely, uh, you will lose some money due to this kind of an issue. Everything have its own uh, cost, definitely. Lots of time. Again, uh, the projects are with limited time. You should complete the project. There will be losses to the, all the parties, including engineer, inclu uh, the contractor, and the client. So the timely completion is essential. OK, how to avoid the dispute? A good project management plan. Uh, and clear contract documentation with then balance of risk allocation. This is very important as this is our role as well. 
in, in commercial side or contract side or QBS. He should be very clear with that when a project is bid or when a project is going to award. He should be knowing the contractual documents are well established and uh, in place. There should be uh, some kind of, and uh, there should be some kind of uh, proper audit to be uh, placed. Partnering and uh, alliance will come for the partnering one. If you have such a relationship, partnering alliance relationship, the dispute, the level of dispute will reduce in a very uh, good manner. Good client management. You should uh, keep a very good relationship with your client. That also reduce or the dispute or the volume of the dispute will reduce. Again, good construction management within the project. There should be a good management. This also reduce the project, how to manage the subcontractors, how to manage your scheduled work in case of a delay, how to mitigate rather than uh, waiting for a real impact. Good uh, design team management in the uh, initial stage, there should be a very good uh, design team and uh, they should manage very well with uh, adapting all uh, required uh, information from the other party and incorporating all, uh, all the information within the design. Uh, there is a very big process. It should be well managed in the design stage. Of course, most of the disputes are due to the payment. So good payment practice to be there, on-time payment. Everybody is depending on their, their wages and the, their end of the day benefits. So if you have a proper payment mechanism, the most of the dispute will be reduced from there. Effective communication. That also very much affected the construction contracts or construction projects. The issues or the matters not addressed properly. It's not communicated properly. Parties not understand what the risk involved and uh, how it's big and how it's small. So without knowing the, that they are raising their voice. So if parties communicated very well regarding variation, regarding payment, maybe there will be a payment delay. If you can communicate very well with your right uh, level of authority to other parties, same level, they may agree. There's nobody is going to uh, put you, somebody in trouble for a small issue. So, but if didn't communicate, the ignorance or improper communication or poor communication will create the disputes. And the record keeping. Of course, I have noticed in several projects, they don't have records. They don't have uh, a basic things like contracts or the, what are the amendments, uh, variations, and potential variation, issued variation. They don't have such a record. So this also affecting, if you don't have such a record, the dispute arise. Nobody know what is you what is you, you agreed, and uh, there is no any such document with you. So how you are relying on uh, some others' words without uh, keeping those copy of the document? So record keeping also uh, essential to avoid this conflict. Regular reporting and productivity. So you should keep informed your top management and other party. And uh, there should be a good productivity as well. As productivity is matter. It is the way how you are earning with the time. So the right productivity should be produced and the, it should be reported properly as well. To communicate, again, it should be a way of communication. So we know there is a dispute. If the if conflict is in a small way, when conflict is, uh, Mature, it's uh, matured as a dispute. So in terms of dispute, there are many dispute resolution method within the construction industry and the globe and other industry also they are following the similar. So 
dispute resolution method can be divided into two different categories. Uh, first, uh, traditional dispute resolution methods, which is litigation in the arbitration, and alternative or dispute resolution methods. Other than dispute goes to arbitration or litigation. What else? How each dispute not required to reach the arbitration and the litigation? So what are the other dispute resolution methods available? We used to call this as an ADR, alternative dispute resolution method. The complexity of dispute in building and construction has certainly increased in the expense and delay in litigation and arbitration as there are a lot of issues within the construction project. If you go with each issue to arbitration or litigation, so expensive, it's not a, um, uh, let's say, easy job. The lawyers are so expensive, construction lawyers are very much expensive. They will charge hour, hourly rate. I heard uh, one of UK firm has charged recently uh, uh, for a construction lawyer, he flew from the uh, Heathrow, uh, to some GCC country. So the, their hourly paid is start the, from the flight time from Heathrow takeoff and the until the again landing. She will come here and do her consultation and going back to Heathrow until she's uh, going back home or the airport, the total period to be paid. And uh, it's indoor uh, pounds, so it's so expensive. So litigation is so expensive. And arbitration also very much expensive these days. So it's million, not in a uh, thousand or hundred thousand. So if you can avoid this thing, you can save a lot of money in terms of client, contractor, and other parties. Alternatively, parties who are in the dispute to reach a conclusion of their dispute without litigation and arbitration. From the concept of alternative dispute resolution with the help of neutral third party, it's not necessary, uh, or just a party alone. Okay, that's what. So this kind of an arrangement, if they can make rather than going litigation and arbitration, they can save a lot of time and money and the goodwill with both parties. ADR is confidential. Nobody knows you had a dispute, mainly for the con contractors and client as well. They can keep their reputation. It's faster, mostly on-site issues, uh, solutions, cheaper, only you are going to pay and some hours for a local lawyer or a contract administrator. Then uh, then tra traditional court system. At the same time, arbitration as well. Arbitration also very expensive. In several countries, the users of ADR helping to reduce the case load. This is to the government. If you put a thousand case in, in one project how a court will bear that, how they will allocate the time in the national court system. So the, this will help to the national court system as well. If you see in GCC countries as well, they are now introducing, before you go to court, you should have some steps. You cannot directly go and file a case in, in terms of mainly in construction contracts. You should have the, some procedural uh, thing. They are trying to do some negotiation kind of thing in the initial stage. If you fail on that, then only you can reach uh, to, you can reach the judge, you can go to the court or you can register a case, but you can reach to the judge and have uh, steps. So in general, this is the spectrum, the range of this good resolution, very minimum level negotiation same uh, variation meetings, 
or project meeting, you do, you every day do this negotiation. What is negotiation? Very simply, we are going for an uh, issue. So both the party come up with a solution and midway they have agreed. We'll go in detail. So negotiation, it's in first level, mid-level mediation. There will be a third party and he will mediate and he will do such a thing. Then adjudication. There will be a third party, but he is uh, with the power. He can order you. Even though you don't like, you should obey his orders. It's binding decisions. So in terms of very soft level negotiation, uh, neutral fact finding, this will have a look on that. Expert uh, appraisal and neutral, L neutral evaluation. These are mostly internal things you do within your company. Okay, to have a look, where are you? Then mediation consolidation, we'll have a look detail. And the hard part, litigation, arbitration, also almost similar. Not almost, it is similar. Expert determination, it can be in that range, but it cannot also. Adjudication, Ombudsman, okay, this is a, a UK's uh, oh, from the Western. Uh, this part of uh, countries, Gulf region, you cannot see Ombudsman. Uh, we will not look at on the Ombudsman. I'll tell you shortly. Ombudsman are uh, mostly uh, in, if you see the RICS also, uh, you can see. If you have an issue with RICS, you can comply. RICS should, should, uh, Evaluate your complaint and, and uh, they should reply to you. If you are not happy with your reply, their reply, you can go for an ombudsman. RIC, in the RICS, uh, the issues, that means they are uh, how to deal the procedure, dispute, uh, no, the complaint handling procedure is addressing who is their ombudsman, a third party. So you can comply there and you can tell, uh, I have issue with RICS. So RICS given an answer, it's not, I'm not happy with that. So please have a look at it. So <clears throat> maybe you have already learned in the uh, uh, other CPD sessions. So in complaint handling procedures, the, the ombudsman also mentioned who is their ombudsman in case of the not agreement with their solution for the issues or the complaint. Each organization, not only agencies, most of the organization, they have their ombudsman uh, in their complaint handling procedure, it's clearly mentioned. So the historically, in the institute wise or in the little organization wise, to have a look the unsettled complaint. Uh, he's kind of an, he has power, he can, uh, some limit of power, but not that much. That means he cannot order, he cannot do, but he can propose some uh, good stuff to the organization, uh, then they will uh, do. So again, dispute review boards, uh, we'll have a look, it's a detailed one. Okay, hierarchy of dispute resolution techniques, we'll have quickly see. First, you should prevent the dispute. We don't want any dispute as it's so costly and um, it's taking time a lot. In other way, if you cannot uh, settle your issues, do with negotiation, go and talk to each other, come in a midway solution and close the deal. Or uh, some neutral uh, kind of dispute resolution procedures uh, to be followed in other way then if you are not happy with that, you can go with the non-binding uh, solutions like mediation, arbitrary adjudication. Uh, we'll talk this is a little further uh, in other slides. Uh, then binding solution, arbitration, litigation. This is the hierarchy, how dispute has uh, going up if it is not settled. 
okay we'll quickly look at the uh, what are the standard form uh, the conflict avoidance and the dispute resolutions in the standard forms of contract i well known you have covered in many cpds uh, with our institute uh, what are the dispute resolution within your contract, FIDIC and uh, other contracts. So we'll quickly look what other things are there in that table form. So I have categorized in the standard forms and dispute resolution provisions. Uh, in JCT, this is a UK based contract, some of the project in Gulf countries also they are using. They have adjudication as an option, uh, as a dispute resolution and the arbitration of course litigation and uh, mediation agreement. And uh, you know, JCT is mainly used in the uh, UK and uh, they have option for <clears throat> adjudication as per the uh, uh, Act, the uh, UK Act, uh, Construction Act, according to Construction Act as well. So next ICT, I, this is referred to the engineer, same like FIDEC, then adjudication is there and arbitration is there as a the dispute resolution procedures within the contract. NEZ, uh, new engineering contract, and uh, they have arbitration. Arbitration, they have two books, option one and option two. Option one goes with the UK Construction Act. Option two is for the international. We also can use for the uh, agreed arbitration, adjudication. And um, it's called contractual adjudication. And arbitration and litigation, same way they, have, they also have. Then uh, PPC. It's a framework agreement uh, for partnering. Uh, they also have a dispute resolution system um, as mediation, conciliation, and ADR, adjudication, arbitration, litigation as well. PPC, they have, a, a, there are several contract, TPC and a PPC. This is a framework agreement for the partnership or partnering, actually. Uh, FIDIC. FIDIC has, uh, okay, engineer, dispute adjudication board, arbitration. Uh, some part of uh, FIDIC has amended for the litigation as well on this part of world. Okay, partnering, in very general. Partnering is in procurement arrangement. Okay, a framework procurement arrangement. Why we are looking the on this? Because RICS uh, exists as, or pushing us to, have a look within this area as well or to have a basic knowledge of partner what is partner it's very simple it's a kind of a group of people are together to do a, such a job rather than doing as an each party they are combined as a one party uh, and they have uh, they're having a different role so everybody is working towards to a one goal rather than each one have their own goals. That is the main um, advantage of partnering. Um, practice the partnering practice that promote the great cooperation between the project team. So there will be no separated team, the engineering team or consultant team, the contractor team, some contract team. Everybody is having an almost similar rights and uh, similar obligation. So each party will be a part of this project rather than each separate. Uh, building, collaborating relationships in order to minimize the conflict. So if you are working as a team, within a team, there will be very minimum conflict. If you have several teams, so then only the conflict arises. So here in, from the concept of partnering everybody is becoming an uh, one team and uh, it's minimized the conflict they promote more open system communication so each and everyone can talk directly communicate directly so this is also a very good uh, advantage in partnering the practice participant in the project in a project might sign a partnering charter which is non-binding which means Okay, from partnering, nobody will get it into a corner. Okay, there will be no such an harm regulation or rules. You will be working in a very free environment. Alternate 
alternately the parties could adopt a, a binding contract which incorporate the partnering the principle which are normally what in the practice there will be a framework agreement for the partnering within that agreement there will be some internal agreements so some kind of one accountability will be there from that only effective if the participants are proactively engaged in the process throughout the project because if they don't have in, such an intention to work as a team one team and their involvement in a pro proactive way then the concept is not going to work partnering is one of the very good solution uh, it's uh, mainly you, you, they are using in uk and most of the government authorities they are very much interested in to uh, do partnering in uk but in this part of world less but there are some partnering uh, in project or agreement um, in very minimum way let's say future is with partnering and um, rsgs is promoting as well okay we are coming to then all adr methods alternative dis uh, dispute resolution methods negotiation everybody knows Every, everybody doing in meeting so it is a process where the parties work out between them how to resolve the any issues that have arise arisen power to settle the dispute within the parties so within the parties you are just settling the dispute this is the very easiest way to resolve it and very productive way if you have 100 dispute you can resolve more than 80 percentage of those dispute within a good negotiation then going for the adr or dispute resolution method with very minimum losses you will lose very very minimal as nothing to pay for a third party the first and uh, well known people are going to discuss in a very bottom level qs to qs project manager to project manager they know what is the consequence so very effective uh, dispute resolution method uh, so then i will move on to the next uh, point Mo the most widely used every day everywhere we are using not limited to construction projects rely upon the parties finding in common ground uh, they are trying to fix the issue within a common ground in between midway solution participation uh, pre sorry preparation for the negotiation involved understanding the range of issues and both parties position so if you are going for a negotiation i believe you have already had an cpd session on negotiation and communication they covered a lot there are many way of negotiation techniques and procedures to be followed a effective negotiation will resolve major issues okay a major part of the issues will be resolved by the, this particular skill two main approach in negotiation competitive or negotiation and the the principled negotiation okay the competitive negotiation will make an offer that is very low usually uh, much less than they are uh, would be fact in fact accept it same like you are making a shopping in a downtown street salesman he you want some kind of an uh, let's say tie or waist belt uh, you last what is the price he'll take 1000 uh, okay or oh, 100 so first shot without checking anything your answer will be uh can i give you 10 dollars can you close the door deal so such a negotiation he is asking 100 dollars you know it's worth of 25 dollars but you are going with 10 dollars because if you know it's uh, he will come down 
this is not a genuine way of negotiation and rscs not promote such a negotiation as well so you should be knowing very well what is your limit the upper range and reasonable upper range and reasonable lower range and within that you should play your uh, the negotiation arguments in a reasonable way rather than counting or uh, damaging somebody else so this is the first uh, second level this is principled uh, negotiation the here this is the key the separate the people from the problem most of the dispute or issues arise from the people which mean i am personally angry with him he didn't give uh, proper respect or oh, i asked three quotation he didn't give he is just coming with one so definitely i will not accept this such a scenario is uh, playing uh, most of the dispute to uh, not to settle so we should just focus on the dispute not the people so for example if both the keywords are in the trouble or the in the dispute so each both the project manager can come to the picture and discuss the issue as an uh, as they will focus only only on the problem so if the these both the keywords are going to resolve or going for the negotiation the ego will be there so definitely the issue will be not resolved so here the mainly you should separate the people from the problem just focus on the problem and focus on the interest not on the position uh, even the positions are mutual gain options are mutual gain and insist then objective correctly so objectively how we can resolve this issue okay you asking 10 dollars my rate is 8 dollars in between 9 or 9.15 can we have a deal such an uh, deal should be done in between or midway win-win situation but negotiation is not necessary to have a win-win situation but it's better to have a win-win situation because for a long run okay even though you have you are agreed with the other party for a very minimum amount one day if they uh, realize oh i agree for a very minimum rate mean in next negotiation meeting he will be not with you he will be in other side again he will try to get whatever the loss he or incur in the previous ne- negotiation so for a long term relationship is better to go with an uh, how uh, in an amicable win win way so we are moving to the next slide Okay, dispute board. This is quite interesting area. You may have DRB, dispute adjudication boards, or DAAR. This is a FIDIC form of contracts. These days, use the terms as DA. In 99, if you see DAB, dispute adjudication board, and 2017, it's used as DAAB, dispute adjudication, and avoidance board so these boards are came from actually dispute board the concept of dispute board uh, started from us and uh, gradually in 20s or uh, 1970s it came to uh, uk and uh, first uh, jct in 1970 they started use dispute board uh, so in general dispute board have different names for example dispute review boards and dispute adjudication board in phoenix for example and combined dispute boards and dispute resolution advisors these all are a neutral third party or a set of people three or two or three or one they are going to deal your dispute as a neutral agency and uh, they are giving some recommendation some cases it's binding some cases it's not binding uh, but most of the cases arbitration and the litigation giving a respectful uh, thought on their recommendations that is very 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 clear so in general 
a neutral third party is coming to the picture. So he's going to evaluate your issues. He'll be listening both the uh, arguments. It is a site level uh, structured dispute resolution uh, with a neutral third party. Mm, so he'll be giving his um, decision, same like uh, DAB. There will be a panel and you'll be uh, submitting his, uh, for him and he'll be giving his decision. Some cases is binding, some cases, most of the cases is not. And mediation and consultation. This is well uh, organized, one of the very successful uh, dispute, alternative dispute resolution tool, mediation and consultation. Okay, in theoretically, mediation and consultation are most similar. In mediation, there will be a mediator, he will facilitate the, the dispute resolution or process between the party to come up with an uh, amicable settlement. In conciliation, he will facilitate at end of the day, if the both party didn't settle the dispute with him, he will give his opinion on the dispute. Theoretically, this is what happened. Uh, same guy is doing uh, the facilitation and the end of the day, he's giving if he's give her his conclusion or his uh, point of view, then it will be a conciliation. It is only theoretically. Practically, it is not like that. Mediation can be done by anybody who has that capacity and capability, which is skill. But conciliation can be done only from lawyers or judges or whom or in the people involved in the contracts. They have the knowledge of contract and litigation because there are processes uh, to be followed in conciliation. Mediation anybody can do because the first of all, a very good example. Uh, these days, uh, USA has done a massive role to end the Gulf crisis. The, the main way of dispute resolution or crisis resolution was via mediation. There was two, three mediators. One of the key mediators is Kuwait. Then uh, USA. Uh, uh, those are the people uh, done the mediation and uh, play a big role. It is done via mediation. So uh, the dispute is resolved as well. Now kind of an amicable way we have. So mediation is a process. There will be a mediator. He'll be facilitating uh, by talking to each other separately. And uh, he's, he'll try to bring the gap very less or reduce the gap. And uh, at the same time, he will encourage. He will be uh, talking about the consequences due to these issues, if it is settled, how things will be moving. So such a thing will be done by him. But conciliation, such a thing also will be done. And he will give his opinion as well, uh, in, uh, individually for the parties and the in general, uh, what is his opinion as well. Uh, these also, those opinions are accepted or uh, accepted by litigation and arbitration as well. So it has some kind of validity. At least they will have a look. So, uh, in general, there are two type of uh, mediation, evaluation and facilitative. Facilitative, what I told you, they will facilitate. Uh, the evaluative, what I did, it's a kind of a conciliation. Uh, he will give his judgment. So what I want to say here, the more, uh, most of the uh, contract, also, now these days they are practicing mediation and the conciliation as well. And if you see many of the arbitration institute, we'll see what are the arbitration and arbitration institute in later slides. They are now pushing uh, when you are going for the arbitration. First, go with the conciliation, then come up if you cannot solve the issue to the arbitration. 
most of the institute has named as well conciliation and arbitration institute. The first conciliation, then only arbitration, because people spending a lot of money in the uh, arbitration. Uh, so to reduce that or the, to, to reduce the load, the institute arbitration institute are forcing them to go for conciliation. And uh, one of other thing is. Conciliation is addressed in Qatar Civil Code, most of the Civil Code as well. Uh, civil Code Article 577 is talking uh, for the conciliation or encouraging parties to go for a conciliation yeah, and other contracts also. So we are talking about mediation. So recently, most of the countries uh, signed a mediation convention, Singapore Mediation Convention in the Gulf as of today or yesterday, I am doing an um, essay on this uh, Singapore Mediation Convention. I will be publishing in, in my LinkedIn. Uh, whatever I read and I understand, I, I am publishing in my LinkedIn. You can follow Fauzan Rafiq in LinkedIn. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to publish every week once of uh, at least one article. Not uh, much, a small summary kind of an article what I understood on that week or what I learned on that week, I'm sharing with uh, whoever next to me or around me, that's it. So I'm doing an article I will be publishing. So there will be further details on that as well. <clears throat> so I'll talk about gender. So Singapore media, media, uh, Mediation Convention, Convention on Mediation. It is a convention. It's similar to uh, New York uh, Arbitration Convention. Uh, so from these, what uh, uh, going, they are going to do, if in a one country, if there is a mediation agreement between a party and uh, each party is from a different country, so other party have the asset on his own country means that agreement can be enforceable from this mediation um, Convention, same like an arbitration award. If you have an arbitration award in a UK a company between the UK and Qatar, so if the Qatar has the um, if the owner's assets, so UK award will be enforceable in Qatar via this uh, New York Convention. So similar to that, the Singapore Convention also in mediation. If you have an agreement between the parties the other party can claim uh, from the enforcing within the countries. Right now, I believe 53 countries uh, already signed this Singapore Mediation uh, Convention. Uh, you can enforce. In uh, Middle East, Qatar has signed. And uh, Qatar has signed as a third country, third state. and. Uh, Saudi Arabia has, uh, KSA has signed the convention. Uh, Jordan has signed, and uh, there are many countries, China, India, USA, Turkey, Ukraine, many, many, many countries has signed, Malaysia has signed this convention. It's increasing, it's increasing. So if the same like New York convention, it's signed in 1953, so, if you give some kind of fight in years time, everybody will be uh, most of countries, nations in the universe have signed, um, will sign. So on such situation, mediation will be a very good tool for uh, to country to country to, uh, con to enforce a mediation decision, mediators agreement between uh, the countries. So it is again uh, from the unisectoral United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. Uh, they are the owners of these uh, mediation convention as well. Uh, simply they are promoting mediation as an alternative dispute resolution, uh, not to go for arbitration and uh, litigation to resolve and uh, enforceable. These are the major thing. So, in Qatar, uh, they are in a draft preparation of the uh, law, or the draft law. Uh, 
uh, on mediation convention and um, Saudi Arabia is still the the Saudi Arabia courts may accept this mediation convention enforcement in future. They are in the process as well. There is no any such case has recorded yet, which means there is no any case laws. So maybe in future, in near future, we can pursue such. Okay, mini trial. It's an ADR process to resolve the dispute without incurring the expense and delay associated with the court or litigation or arbitration, whatever, the normal traditional systems. A mini trial is a different from the actual trial in being, being a voluntary and non-binding process, but like trials, process is still adversary. adversary. That means there will be a judge kind of a thing and he will hearing everything and both the party will present. So not official, but it will, the kind of a thing is there. So it is an structured settlement procedure that uh, treat the dispute more as a business problem rather than the legal one. So the judge will be looking or, like, or the person who is resolving uh, in the bench will be uh, looking in the business perspective rather than the legal perspective, which means money is the matter rather than the facts. Uh, if the money is involved a lot, then he'll be putting a more pressure. If there is no such thing um, for a small issue, so he will be uh, ordering an uh, amicable settlement sign kind of thing. The parties pay equally shared with the mini trial cost. Is this is as per the agreement? Uh, sometimes the one party also can pay if both agree. A mini trial will be put all the parties in perspective of what is going to happen if they actually head to the trial. That means. There should be a proper agreement in minute trial, not only minute trial, for all the alternative dispute resolution, because there is no uh, binding until otherwise you agree in the end of the day what will happen. Okay, he will give an decision. Is it binding? It's not binding. If it is not binding, why you are going for that? So, such an uh, arguments are there. So, a proper agreement to be done for all the alternative uh, dispute resolution, because these are not forced by the law you uh, purposely or you, uh, this is your reference or your intention to go with. So the both the party should agree in case of um, uh, his decision. Is it binding or what is the next level? The main goal of the mini trial process is to uh, predict the result of an actual trial. A judge will be looking on this issue and he will tell, if you go to the court, this will be the solution. So kind of in between you can settle the issue. Uh, very simple, he will be giving an overall picture who has the plus or who has the minus. And uh, if you can go in between, you have the uh, negotiation. If you go to the litigation system, you may fail or you'll get something. This is mini trial, very less uh, use of mini trial. I think this part of the world, very few or zero adjudication, very interesting subject. Okay, hereafter, whatever we are talking is a massive information. Adjudication, most of the embassies are either adjudication or arbitration or both. So a huge amount of volume of information is available. I'll give the whatever possible and required for RICS. The adjudication is a kind of a uh, process which involves a third party. Uh, he's neutral. And there are three type of uh, basic ad adjudications. One, the adjudication from the law, statutory adjudication, which is in UK and Hong Kong, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand. They have a construction law the adjudication should must follow in the construction contracts. So by law itself, they are bound to uh, go for adjudication in case of an issue before they are reaching the court procedures. So in that, 
their contract is bound to have a if it is a construction contract uh, there is a uh, definition which are the contracts come more under the adjudication act or the construction act they should fail this is uh, the adjudication by law then adjudication by contract for example we can say both the party agreeing for an uh, in a contract like our infidic dab a dispute adjudication board or if you see a uh, nec uh, new engineering contract option 2 there is a contractual adjudication so the such, such an adju adjudication only they are going the same adjudication but it is not mandatory from the by the law country's law the parties are agreeing to go such an adjudication so it is happening parties going for the adjudication this is called contractual adjudication so third will be uh this is an a kind of uh within the contract or after the project executed in an issue the both the party intentionally going okay we would like to go adjudication both the parties uh, going for an adjudication uh this is not by the law their contract also doesn't have the adjudication clause intentionally the, these parties are going for their adjudication because of the cause and blah blah things that also possible uh, intentionally they are going for an adjudication so there are three type of an adjudication mostly they are talking the most of the area the contract uh, the by law the adjudication in the construction law in uk malaysia uh, sipu hong kong i think uh, i don't know singapore hong kong is there so australia new zealand those countries have a uh, fundamental procedure by law uh, that is the adjudication most of the people know a well established fundamental uh, procedure in uk they have law and uh, the revision on that law and they are going for another revision as well and uh, well established procedure uh, adjudication is simply said like this uh, pay first argue later adjudication will give an temporary solution like to process it is not a final solution if the not party is not binding and a temporary solution to resolve the issue temporarily end of the project if parties are not agreeing with the adjudication decision they can go to the court so in this is a midway solution if parties agree there is no issue if the parties not agree they can go for the court so it's a midway solution in a, and the adjudicator will come to the site and it's in house solution as well within the site the problem will be solved and time bars are there okay it's mentioned here as well any party can refer to the dispute at any time to the adjudicator either if you are within the contract if you agree also the same procedure will be followed one dispute has been referred to adjudicator he should appointed adjudicate and adjudicator should appointed and dispute referred to the adjudicator within 7 days issued of the notice these are the procedures mentioned in the uk construction contract uh, so this is not a very important in terms of adjudication uh, addition to be given uh, within 28 days uh, this is also a part of uk's law adjudicator must give the both party reasonable opportunities and uh, they should listen adjudicator should give the decision is uh, binding except they go for the court for if they agree so what you should understand here such a process will be there there will be a third party adjudicator he'll be listening your case both will get a similar opportunity end of the day adjudicator should give his uh, wording okay, same like a judge so to ro uh, have an adjudicator role you should have such a construction contract knowledge as you should write the wording and if there is any issue on your uh, judgment and uh, you should be accountable as well so it's a good role a potential role uh, gulf countries are looking forward arbitration arbitration is the process most of the construction law books says arbitration is equal to litigation there such a power is there for the arbitration as well 
the arbitration in the process itself is subject to uh, the country's law, that means statutory controls, where formal disputes are determined by private tribunal choose by the parties. So we are choosing the tribunal. We are choosing our own judge. And arbitration might be the and an arbitrator might be appointed by an agreement of the parties, or if the parties are unable to agree and have already uh, identified an uh, appointing an institution with, within their arbitration agreement, that the institute would be uh, then have the power to appoint. What they are going to say. Parties should agree on arbitrators. That means if, if there is three arbitrators, if it is one arbitrator, then it's an issue. Most of the cases in construction contract, there will be three arbitrators. One arbitrator is mostly there for a small contract, subcontract agreement issues, such a thing. So if it is a three party, you know, three arbitrators, each party will appoint an arbitrator. Those two arbitrators will appoint then chairperson. Each party appointing arbitrator means it's not the right way. Each party is proposing an arbitrator. The, those arbitrators are not lawyers. Each party will have in their lawyers. This is just a proposed kind of uh, well-known person. I believe he is a very neutral guy. Kind of thing I am proposing. Other party also believe he will be a neutral person. These arbitrators will not looking even though you are pointing, referring his name. They will not fair or favor on you. They will be favor favor with the facts and evidence. Evidence. So, just an uh, reference only. You will refer one guy, other uh, arbitrator, and other arbitrator will be from other party, and both will be uh, say, the charm. So, how the award will be? One of the arbitrator, maybe if three are agreeing their decision, okay, no problem. If not, each arbitrator will be having a different opinion. The chairman with him, uh, he will decide with whom he is uh, going to vote. So whoever chairman decide, that decision will be binding. Uh, out of three, two signatures are well enough. If this three is best. Uh, then the parties, each party must give one the reasonable opportunity. If you didn't get a reasonable opportunity, you can counter the updated decision. Uh, okay, then the parties might hold a document only arbitration. Uh, or one or short hearing as an alternative arbitrator with the full uh, hearing. So again, both should be treated in a, in a similar manner. Uh, arbitrator's award is final and binding on the parties. You can uh, challenge arbitration award, not in the factor and evidence. You can uh, challenge in the procedure if there is an error in the arbitration award. And your issue, you asking about the issue related to money, the award is related to time, then you can award. You can challenge those award. Only those the, the very few uh, grounds you can uh, challenge the arbitrator's award. Uh, mostly, very few cases you can notice. In UK, you have you have a lot of cases related that, but in this part of the world, very few cases you are challenging an arbitrator's award. Okay, but however, the arbitration uh, soon after arbitrator has given his award, you should. Uh, register in the local courts. Then only you can enforce in the future, uh, for the countries. That means other countries. Arbitrators are what? Okay, final binding. If the parties are settled the dispute, then arbitrator can issue one concerned award, recording the settlement agreement of the parties. Okay, this is an arguable area. Uh, the thing is, arbitrator refused that settlement as well. If they are settling. Uh, well, he can give the, his award on his opinion. If he is agreeing the settlement, he can give that such as. If not, he can give his opinion as well on that settlement award. Most of the case, if parties are agreeing, mean he is uh, writing the same award. Okay, mutually parties has agreed, but he can write his point as well. Actual fact is with him at fact is with uh, other party like that as well. Okay, arbitration, there are some keywords. 
the arbitration law, seat, venue, place, location, arbitration. So uh, I thought to give an idea about that as well. So we got a case here. Project is in case Saudi Arabia. And the contract law in the law they will in the contract itself they will be mentioning which law they are following English law. The seat is arbitration. It's mentioned seat is arbitration. When you is UAE, what uh, you understand from this? I'll tell you. Okay, in case in Jeddah Airport project, in, under English your, your contract says uh, the, this contract is following English law. This is contract. Now the parties has chosen. In if you see the arbitration clause, it's clearly mentioned which institute has uh, chosen. Bahrain is very famous in uh, this part of region. There is an arbitration institute. We'll see in the next slides. GCC. So they are very common and very famous for resolving arbitration. So Bahrain is the seat, which means you are following that arbitration institute, the rules and regulation to administrate this arbitration process. But your contract is under English law, which means of acceptance and everything will be looking only English law. Arbitration, how many arbitrators? how often they will uh, meet uh, these uh, when uh, the how evident will be uh, given how the communication will be there email is accepted or not each party should be communicated with the letters and those things those procedures will be followed by bahrain's gcc uh, or bahrain one of uh, law okay then uh, We'll go to then uh, UAE. There are lots of luxury hotels in UAE. So we will sit physically in UAE. We'll uh, book Atlantic uh, with an underground swimming pool or underground uh, aquarium, a nice venture. And we'll listen the case. Our arbitrator will listen the case in UAE. So UAE, just you are enjoying eating, drinking and uh, listening the case. Physically, the process will be done in UAE. UAE does have, have any such uh, contractual or legal uh, implementation of the, how, how can I say, uh, influence. You are following one of the good institutes in Bahrain. So they are structured to follow the arbitration. You are follow your contracts follows English law, even though it's running in the uh, case. I, I don't know case okay, can run a contract in English law or not. Mostly no. Um, why the English law is very clear and well known by the parties, uh, and uh, there is a good balance between the parties. So English law. Uh, okay, of course, project location is Jeddah. So these are the main areas, I mean, key things you should understand the arbitration and the language. Of course, uh, it's mostly in English arbitration. Very few cases in Arabic, very less. In construction, no, you can say no, uh, as per my knowledge. Okay, enforcement, I already discussed. Arbitration can be enforceable. Of course it is, that's why you are going for the arbitration. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, country to country, if the, both the countries sign New York agreement or similar, there are other agreements as well. Uh, so new conventions, New York convention is very famous. There is uh, one more, one or two convention as well similar, but in construction project, we are mostly following the New York convention. So, Then why you need such a convention I mean, okay, the previous example, now KSA has, uh, uh, the, let's say the contractor from UK. Now in Saudi Arabia, they done some mis mistake and uh, uh, they, uh, the arbitration award has against to this UK 
contract and his assets are in UK. So the award has done and uh, it should be enforced in uh, UK. If it is a normal court procedure, done in the KSA, in the Saudi Arabia, I mean, you cannot enforce uh, somebody's, uh, within KSA, you can enforce, yes, because it's an, uh, let's say, uh, jurisdiction of KSA. But you, how you will enforce in you, you, UK? So what, from this uh, convention, what they uh, agree, if some arbitration award received in KSA, which can be similarly enforced in UK by through this New York Convention, all the parties agreed if uh, the other country has such an award, we are accepting to implement that awards. From that UK contractor will get a court notice and uh, the recovery process will be followed. That is the main uh, benefit. So if we will see who are the countries uh, they have signed in the New York Convention. Uh, as of August 2020, uh, 166 countries have signed. Uh, as of now, also same. Uh, <clears throat> Kuwait has signed in 1978, the first country in Gulf region. Then 88 Bahrain, 94 Saudi Arabia, 99 Kuwait, and uh, 2002 Qatar, and UAE has finally signed in 2006. So you can see the whatever the link I have seen in the New York Convention or countries, the list of the countries. Uh, this is a treaty, bilateral treaty, each of uh, a group of countries, which means both the country are agreeing in case of an uh, award, we are accepting to uh, enforce those awards. Okay, arbitration law. We'll have what is the law provision available within the uh, JCC countries related to the arbitration. In Qatar law number two, 2017, this is the arbitration law, it is uh, has uh, amended uh, from the 13th, law number 13 of 19. And furthermore, Qatar has uh, regulations uh, on top of these arbitration law. Uh, Qatar Financial Center, uh, they have their own regulation for arbitration. And uh, UAE Federal Law 6, 2018 is the new arbitration law. At the same time, UAE also have ADGM uh, arbitration regulation of the big global market regulation and uh, DIF, DIFC uh, regulation. There, there is a law, uh, Dubai law as well, uh, DIFC arbitration law uh, for the debt emirate uh, from the Dubai uh, International Financial Center. Uh, DIFC also one of the very famous uh, arbitration institute in this part of uh, world. And Saudi Arabia has uh, their own uh, arbitration law, Royal Degree 34 Bar uh, 1433. Arbitration law 1433 is the Hijri calendar, Arabic calendar uh, year. Arbitration law 2012. Uh, Saudi also have a well established arbitration uh, law. Uh, it's going with unicef central uh, modern law. So these all arbitration laws, whatever these countries has amended portion, these all going with them UNICEF. Uh, we already talk in the uh, unicentral uh, United Nations trade uh, <clears throat> uh, United Nations uh, modern law. It's going with that because why? Then only you can enforce each other. If you have a different type of law between countries, then when you are enforcing, there will be procedural issues. So most of the whoever agreed on New York Convention, they have similar such law to enforce within their countries, the foreign arbitral awards. So the major purpose of uh, the unicentral law is to make a common ground common law between the uh, counterpart countries 
to to make easy uh, to administrate those uh, binding awards uh, so uh, from the related to arbitration law also uh, i have posted one linking article a short summary article you can follow in my linking page <clears throat> so it continues quite has its own uh, law uh, 11 2019 uh, Bahrain has its own law, 925.15, arbitration law. Oman has a uh, Sultan degree, 1497. Uh, this is also the arbitration law. And uh, Kuwait's law is not uh, fully uh, with the unicentral uh, modern law. They are still uh, in the draft level to amend the law. <clears throat> So arbitration institute among us, uh, around us. So you can see these uh, logos and uh, these things. In Qatar, it's very famous, Qatar International Court and Dispute Resolution, QIC, DR. Uh, you can see here, this is there. Uh, there are most of very good UK judges and the arbitrators are practicing here. Um, and uh, the as the pioneer Qatar International Center for Conciliation and Arbitration. You already told these institutes are pressuring you to go for a dis any dispute resolution with an ADR first, then only come for an arbitration. So, in this particularly, you should go for the conciliation uh, process first, then only you can go for the arbitration. Then, in the UAE. There are several institutions, Abu Dhabi Commercial and Conciliation Arbitration Center, and very famous uh, the Dubai International Arbitration Center, and uh, arbitration, okay, uh, this is an arbitration center, uh, Dubai International Arbitration Center, and London uh, Commercial, uh, London Court of International Arbitration Center, I think, LCIEA, okay. So, these guys are uh, together and uh, they have uh, launched an arbitration center and Dubai has amended the arbitration rules also uh, with uh, LCIA. So it's also very uh, productive. It is a very good uh, next step uh, to get arbitration more flexible. Uh, they have uh, launched their new rules and regulation as well. Okay, why uh, arbitration institutes are required me to administrate arbitration. You need the procedural rule and there should be a guidelines. So you don't have a code, you have you don't have a system. So these are the centers, they are guiding arbitration process. Then uh, uh, in UA, you can find International Islamic Center for Reconciliation and Arbitration. This is especially uh, related to the Sharia issues. Uh, if you are following the Sharia law, uh, you can go here. In Saudi Arabia, they have a uh, SCCA, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Center for Commercial Arbitration. And Kuwait, they have come a Kuwait Commercial Arbitration Center. And Bahrain, they have the very famous uh, GCC Commercial Arbitration Center and the Bahrain Center. Chamber of Dispute Resolution Center. So to Oman, they don't have a domestic arbitration center, but GCC is mostly uh, handling the Oman cases. So Oman has uh, more influence with the uh, GCC Commercial Arbitration Center. And uh, recently, uh, if you see, uh, uh, Oman's uh, <clears throat> government has given approval to start an arbitration center within Oman as well. So these are the arbitration center um, in the Middle East region. Midab, I told you, before arbitration, you should have some uh, kind of a uh, dispute resolution process. So uh, what here uh, they, that means what uh, in this process says, or with this process uh, conclude, Go first for the mediation with the person. 
if fail, you go with an uh, arbitration uh, with the same person in case of mediation is getting failed. Why? Mediation will try in an amicable way to settle this stuff. If you are not agreeing with him, then the rules and regulation come to the picture. The, he will become an arbitrator and he will give his decision. Why it is very important and uh, the mediator know what is actually going on. He'll be in there from the start of the process. So he have an idea what should be a solution. He'll try to convince in an amicable way. If parties not agree, he'll issue as an award. So uh, as now he will become an arbitrator and uh, for the process will start and he will issue as an award or the party can uh, ask a different arbitrator. Then he will uh, review for the all again and a third, uh, he will give his award. This is the mid process, very effective process, but um, very late practice. Mostly they are going for the conciliation. Uh, and uh, from the institute itself. Uh, institute, if you go for an arbitration institute, they will refer conciliation first, then they will go for an arbitration. So mid art board, so you can agree. Okay, independent expert determination. It is very clear. When you have an issue, it's not related to uh, common areas. Maybe you need a te technical expert uh, idea or intention. For example, there is an issue on the bearing capacity. Okay, so of the soil. If you can go for an expert advice, what do you feel on this? Is this sufficient enough? Such a thing, when you have need an expert opinion, then you can go for uh, such an independent expert uh, determination. Mostly, this will uh, get as an evident in courts as well, or arbitration as well. When the arbitrator doesn't have such an specialist knowledge, he will appoint an independent expert to give his witness. That called expert witness. So similar, here you will appoint a third party, you will agree with a third party, give your opinion on that. Maybe the decision is binding. Sometimes it's not binding. These days, this is mostly available in Qatari contracts from other GC countries. Contracts also you can find. For example, uh, expert determination provision is available in the uh, Ashgal contract, Q Rail contracts, and Qatar hospitality contracts. Also, you can uh, see those uh, provisions in the FIDIC based contracts. Also, they have added, uh, they have altered with uh, those clauses. Litigation. Everybody knows. In most, all of the Middle East countries, they are following civil court, civil uh, uh, court system and civil law. So civil law is uh, mostly these countries, civil law is based on the Egyptian uh, civil code and that is based on the French civil uh, codes. So similar law is provisions are available on each cases. So, <clears throat> If you cannot settle your dispute at any level, other than arbitration, you will go to the court. There will be uh, court procedures to be followed and your court case will be uh, dealt with a judge or a couple of judge or depend on the court and they will give their uh, verdict or their, their judgment. Some judgment can be uh, appealable. That means you can appeal for that. Uh, other court will listen again. Some judgment you cannot. Uh, so here, judgment will, will be decided. In construction contracts, uh, construction issues, we not prefer this because most of the judges are from legal backgrounds. They don't have construction knowledge and uh, what is going on here. So that's why the arbitration is more preferred uh, because uh, we need such an our issues, our problems are complicated than the normal issues. So we'll have a quick comparison between arbitration and litigation. 
arbitration is private and uh, confidential uh, there will be a private room you will be enjoying uh, your arbitration session but uh, litigation will be in public and uh, everybody is hearing there will be a procedure to follow timing will be uh, strict party will need to hire a venue the hotel or somewhere and hold the hearing and party will heavily charge on for the arbitrator you should pay the arbitrator it's so expensive a party does not need to pay for the hiring of the venue because the courts are owned by government there will be very very less charges some hundred riyals uh no heavily charges for G the court will get paid from the government so nothing to pay there will be some administ as the administration charges small small 100 riyal something like that arbitration is not uh, always uh, the most convenient method of for hurting hiring sorry multiple uh, dispute not really now there are provisions uh, you can uh, deal arbitration uh, with multiple issues if you see one of the very famous uh, arbitration institutes in uh, the global is the siac singapore uh, international arbitration center they have and uh, i told you uh, Qatar, dubai international arbitration center and the london court of arbitration uh, both also amended their procedure laws uh, procedure uh, rules so they have come up with a solution to uh, deal the multiple arbitrations as well within one arbitrator so it's possible but okay now only they introduce uh, not really flexible but it was possible and uh, it is growing. Go to able to hear multiple cases uh, more readily, more economically. Economically mean you should pay the lawyers. Lawyer fees are very expensive. I already told you. Uh, but uh, multiple cases mean it will be different cases, different judges. Okay, one judge will not deal all the cases. So there are plus and minus in both cases. In general knowledge, I'm telling. Okay, we'll see the final topic of today's session, good faith. This, uh, okay, before I start uh, that, uh, good faith is well believed in this part of world. Okay, uh, this is part of Sharia as well. So, uh, this good doctrine of good faith is affecting all the uh, Gulf countries' regulations and rules and laws. Uh, for your information, I'm doing a small article on this good faith as well. I will be publishing in uh, my LinkedIn page, uh, maybe next couple of, within the next couple of weeks, you can follow on that. I, I'll summarize the, whatever the uh, required information on that as well. Uh, doctrine of good faith uh, playing a massive role in the dispute resolution approach uh, practice in Middle East region. The parties are bound by the terms they have agreed to and the duty of good faith does not alter their contractual rights. Within their contractual right, you should be obliged, you have an obligation to have a good faith. Indeed, it could be argued that a party seek to uh, agreed the terms through an application of good faith uh, argument may itself not to not to be acting in a good faith in seek to do so okay that's the thing you're supposed to be in a good faith manner okay but within your contractual rights if you are losing a contractual right when you don't want to be in such a uh, area but there are many law provision within these uh, countries. You should have good faith. Recently in Doha, uh, there was a uh, <clears throat> meeting arranged by Society of Construction Law. They are the key holders making construction law. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I believe you, many of you have heard uh, about Society of uh, Society of Construction Law. Uh, uh, they are very 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 famous in um, issuing articles and uh, there is membership as well most of the uh, these postgraduate msc and llm courses are 
accelerated uh, approved by them the society of construction law these is an uk based company same like rcs are one of professional uh, body uh so they had conducted a meeting related to their good faith in uh, doha last year i think uh, last or the previous year. <clears throat> in gulf countries all of the laws in, in the all of the gcc countries has the good faith in within the uh, contracts in uh, direct or indirect way um society of construction law is very famous for the concurrency they have definition maybe now you guys can understand or remember uh, article 172 one in qatar it says a contractor must be perform in accordance with its content and in a manner consistent with the requirements of good health so you should perform with a good uh, faith in contract it's very clear in qatar civil law same wording is there in the uae's code civil code uh, article 246 and the bahrain civil law code article 2129 similar wording is there but if you see other countries they don't have qatar oman kuwait such a similar code but their contract or the law is uh, indirectly highlighting that that means article 11155 155 of oman civil code it's uh, talking about the the parties should uh, the duty to have a good uh, faith in their contractual rights uh, they are implementing implementing the construction rights and uh, <clears throat> under quake law okay quick law is not that much of uh, impressive but it also saying the commercial agency law and the law of commerce uh, they should have uh, uh, have the minimum level of uh, good health when uh, good sorry good faith when uh, franchise has uh, involved in to the contract and uh, Saudi Arabia as well they have given a very good uh, importance to the good faith in uh, Saudi Arabian humble law the in uh, Saudi Arabia they are f- following the humble law this is called the contract law so it is uh, Saudi Arabian humble law there is a concept of fraud of intention niya in arabic so that also pressuring them to be in a good faith manner so which method of or dispute resolution you are going to select your project so this is totally depend on the what is your issue and what stage you are in on that is issue if it is an initial stage you can go for a negotiation uh and how much money involved and if it is a negotiation are you the right person right capacity to negotiate such a issues those are involved in negotiation or will if it is a issue is little big and you cannot control within the parties involved then a mediate a conciliation can be proposed conciliation is very good for a small scale project even a waste case uh, dispute because it's not expensive and um, a party come and uh, he'll a third person come and involved and he will give his opinion maybe if you can agree for a conciliation agreement to make that decision as binding it's a binding decision uh then you have uh, many other dispute resolution method in between like mini trial or expert determination uh so such uh, also a practice in between or as an next level you can go adjudication it's also a kind of a uh, structured process or the arbitration and the litigation or litigation in construction contract very less but uh, of course in middle east region you should end up with litigation there are many cases arbitration also there not much 
There are very famous cases uh, in Qatar and the UAE as well, other countries as well. Um, and if you see the Saudi Arabia, they started in 1960 itself arbitration issues. There is a very famous case uh, between Aramco and uh, some other companies uh, related to arbitration in Saudi Arabia. And uh, arbitration is mentioned in the Quran as well. Uh, in the Quran, it's mentioned when a domestic dispute, in a dispute between a husband and wife, uh, if they cannot resolve the issue, uh, they, each party should appoint an uh, arbitrator and those arbitrators should come for a solution uh, and uh, that should be implemented. So arbitration is very familiar with this region. And so that also a very interesting uh, stuff. Uh, these people uh, like to have the arbitration. Uh, so <clears throat> arbitration is expensive millions so your issue should be that much worth for a small issue maximum level the conciliation or well, if conciliation fails better to go for the litigation uh, because uh, if you go for the arbitration the cost will be very high i heard uh, in a very famous case lawyer and arbitration fee has paid by one party the between half for 30 million. So, reals or dirhams. So, such an expensive, which means both the party will be 60 million Qatar reals, a small house project value. So, it's so expensive arbitration. But uh, if the dispute is well uh, and a very big uh, amount is dealing, your claim is uh, that such then you can go for it. Uh, and uh, if you are very confident with uh, and your lawyers are advising you, all the costs will be recoverable, which means uh, end of the day, if uh, judgment or the verdict is favor to you mean, the other party should give all the cost related arbitration as well, whatever the cost you spent. So you are going to not lose anything uh, and it will take time and um, it is a process. Okay, it's normally they agree to have arbitration session within six months, but practically very less cases. Uh, the arbitration has resolved within six months. It's taking years and years. One of very famous case uh, has taken more than three years. So it's a long-term process and every day will be costing you. Same like Atlantic's uh, down, uh, aquarium view uh, rooms, something like that. And not one room, there will be several rooms. That means the panel will be sitting in one room, judge will be, or the arbitrators will be having each individual room as uh, they are sitting two or three days. And uh, the contractor side, they will be having two, three rooms. And the client side, they will be having two, three rooms. Administrative staff will be having one or two rooms. All facilities, air tickets, mostly uh, good venues, Singapore, or London, or Dubai. Uh, so it's expensive. It's so expensive. So your issue should be that much worth. The better to deal with within the contract. Your contract will be having a dispute resolution uh, method. You should have if it is failing before going for the final, you should have a uh, try with uh, ADR methods. If not, okay, finally end up with uh, arbitration or litigation. If it is arbitration, the final uh, judgment or the award to be enforced. Okay, that is the end of session. I have some queries, uh, questions here. I will try to answer those. Arbitration is a part of ADR or traditional resolution. Okay. If you see uh, books, which I already mentioned in the uh, contracts, uh, this presentation, they are telling in the UK's books, it's clearly mentioned, ADR is different from arbitration and the uh, litigation. Or in other way, ADR came to the picture as an alternative to the arbitration and litigation. They are treating as arbitration and litigation as a traditional method of dispute resolution and ADR is separate. But 
I have seen some argument, this uh, alternative, the word to be used, alternative to your contract. If your contract says litigation as a final uh, mode of dispute resolution, are the all are alternative to that, including arbitration. If your contract says, of course, yeah, arbitration as a final mode of uh, dispute resolution, then okay, that argument will not come as nobody is accepting litigation as an uh, alternative dispute resolution. But such an argument is there. So I believe ADR is uh, alternative to arbitration and litigation as both are traditionally we are following years and years. Arbitration we are following as per record more than 100 years, but it's very more. That means there are very old cases as well. So the next question I'm moving, any particular example of partnering contracts in GCC? There are partnering contracts. Actually partnering doesn't have contracts. There is a framework agreement only. Partnering means a collaboration. JV also kind of a partnering, but JV is a separate case, but which means you are in a very high level. Yeah, we are agreeing on that. Uh, I can give an example. Uh, maybe you heard or not, I, I don't know, but um, I can give an example right now. Uh, Sri Lanka has agreed a framework agreement to sell a part of a port, okay? It is an agreement, a framework agreement. You don't agree much thing. Very principal thing you will be agree. Each party can be disagree within that. There are very much freedom. Uh, same like on framework agreements. I believe they have done a framework agreement right now with the GCC crisis. They signed on that day an agreement between the uh, the friendly countries and friend other member countries, a framework agreement. This is a very high level mutual agreement to further develop. So such an agreement is partnering. There will be no payment clauses, no such a detailed clauses. There are very famous two, uh, uh, this framework agreement, uh, uh, TCC, uh, term part, TPC, term partnering contract and uh, construction partnering contract, I think. Uh, there are two uh, uh, framework agreement uh, on that base only uh, the standard forms. So on that base only they are mostly um, all the, they will not use uh, as uh, normal as uh, the, the that form. They will little amend and they will, they are using that. Okay, I'll go um, move, uh, move forward. Uh, do GCC construction market have dispute resolution board? Very good question as it's dispute uh, uh, portion. Actually, I'm doing a research on this. Okay, let's see how it's come. Uh, dispute adjudication board is a very effective dispute resolution system which FIDIC has pro proposed. And this is very much, uh, okay, but very much fixing to the Middle East region, but I have noted many of contracts in uh, Gulf nations or Middle East region, this DAB provision has deleted and uh, they are just going with uh, some other provision or arbitration directly without, uh, that means without any reason, uh, reasonable reason. So if they can implement DB, DAB as an provision or practice DAP, most of the dispute can be uh, resolved very easily. Um, so no, DAB practicing is very less. Some places DAB is practicing kind of, a, they have to selecting DAB members like both the power companies, the directors and some uh, engineers member as well, such as the right practice is not there. But uh, maybe in future there will be, and uh, I am personally uh, forcing all. I am personally 
making awareness to do dab in gulf uh, countries can you appeal if a loss in arbitration or litigation okay i told you the arbitration award is not uh not you cannot uh, counter uh, because on the basis of fact and evidence okay but if you feel arbitrator is not giving you a proper opportunity he is doing some favoritism or he is not following the procedures or he is not uh, following the he is not answer your question which mean you are asking about money he is talking about time in his award on such situation you can appeal and uh, arbitrator will amend the award and re issue litigation of course you can appeal it's depend on the subject and the court if it is a down level court yes of course uh, next level court uh, you can go for example uh, the civil proceeding with uh, start with uh, first instant courts then uh, the court of cassation or each uh, country has different names then uh, at the level of courts it will go okay uh so normally civil cases majestic court or then the uh, <clears throat> district court so there are steps right if you don't like you can go for next step uh, it's possible uh, but in arbitration okay not in a fact or even you cannot uh, dispute the arbitration award but in other ways you can yes if you have any question i am wish to answer or we can i think uh, there are no more questions uh okay one more question i think can okay it is that's it yeah i will uh, okay okay basis and also by some okay also can be challenged yes of course yes he should be a neutral guy he should give you an opportunity he should not take some money and give the award to other party so he's almost a judge and uh, a recent case in recorded in qatar some arbitrator has done some favoritism and he got an big penalties okay so you should do justice to your what you hear that uh, you cannot be favor to anybody so any other question i am in the end of the session and we all on time in other 10 minutes i have you have, have any questions if you have any question you can uh, write to me in the link in i am available fauzan rafiq uh, so send me a question um, i'll try to answer uh in a short time uh, possible way uh so the i told you in the beginning uh, competency competency wise uh, we have done 18 cpd session this will end now and we'll be continue with some other topics uh, same like before we'll come up with an we are discussing on that uh, there will be some uh, more cpds on future uh, timely basis will we will be inform you that mostly we are focusing on who are apc candidates uh who wish to have some more apcs you can uh, send us the messages uh, so we can uh, in the topic which you we need or so we can consider that as well uh, it is wonderful session i think i had some value to your knowledge and experience what i had i done uh, <clears throat> so i believe uh, there is no further questions uh, so we can wind up now uh, yeah i'll check finally if there any questions yeah there is no further questions uh, thank you very much guys and uh, ladies and gentlemen mm, see you in next, next session uh, so i'm getting a chat and just check thank you thank you very much uh, have a wonderful time thank you good luck